Hi everyone. I've been traveling, but I've been home for about a week now. Even if I'm not posting, I always do private readings as well. So you can always email me at dragonenchantress at awol.com if you want to book a private reading. My email is right below in the description box. And thank you guys for being here. I appreciate the engagement too. I'm still trying to get back in the algorithm. It's really been kind of difficult to, to beat the algorithm because YouTube has changed everything around so much. So I really do appreciate the shares and the likes and comments. And I love hearing your stories. So let's see what the story is here. Occupation coffin. Okay. So someone has just had an ending to a job or they're about to have a job and there might be like a toxic stagnant job that someone is working here and your spirit guides are leading you away from that. They might want you to quit that job. That might just be a toxic environment that they want to get you out of. It's like whatever karmic lessons you had to teach others or whatever karmic lessons you were being taught there, I feel like they've wrapped up and it's just not really a good environment for you to be in anymore. There might have been potential at this job at one time, but I feel like I feel like something shifted because people have free will. So I feel like whatever potential was at this job is just not there anymore. And you'll know if this is for you because you'll feel this. Like you dread going to work. You feel awkward or uncomfortable. There's someone there that makes you uncomfortable. There's it's a very stagnant environment. You can tell that you're not really going anywhere. You feel like it. It's like you feel this tension in your body. Like you'll know if this is for you. Um, and I think your spirit guides are basically saying, hey, like try to find something else. Try to secure something else. Because I feel like if you don't end this on your own, they might end up ending it for you because they want you out of this situation. They want you out of this stagnant energy. And they, you know, obviously it'd be much better for you to just... Uh, smoothly transition out of this and have something lined up but if you stay in your comfort zone at some point it's like they're going to give you that kind of shove um so it, it's better to you know prepare yourself for this even if you have a few months left at this job it's like it's better to have something lined up instead of you know having a tower moment where you just get in a fight with your boss or something happens and you just lose this job overnight um because you know intuitively that your spirit, you know intuitively that this is not a good place. I feel like this corporation is corrupt or there's a coworker, coworkers or managers, just some kind of corruption in this place that you're at and your spirit guides are trying to get you to transition. The path is open for you here. Let's see what else they want to say. Why concern? Wealthy man. I honor lovers. Adjudication. Let me get some tarot on this. Why concern? That's the one card that's throwing me off a little bit. Bear with me, guys. Why concern? Why concern? Six of Wands. Seven of Wands. The moon. Ten of cups. Seven of cups, the magician. I feel like there's an opportunity coming in and it's connected to love. I feel like there's a wealthy man coming in, a very honorable man. This man has integrity. There's there's love here. I feel like what's hidden is with the moon, what's hidden is the Ten of Cups. Is that you might have a new job or a new um something financial that's that's going to be tied to this new man, this wealthy man. I feel like with the six of wands and son of wands, it's like, because with this concern, I'm getting a spirit guide. I'm getting the energy of like a, maybe a male spirit guide, like an older male that could be a deity even. It's like they're worried. They want you to have success. Six of wands is success, seven of wands, but it's almost like they're worried that you're going to be stubborn and that you're not going to take this opportunity. Because with the moon here, what's hidden is the Ten of Cups. But they're worried about you getting in this energy of illusion, of not knowing what's in front of you, not realizing what's in front of you. 
I think they want to avoid a situation too where they don't they don't want you to to get into this energy of desperation. Because I feel like if you stay in this toxic environment, whatever this job is, that's not making you happy. I feel like if you stay in that job and if they have to end this job for you on their own, I feel like you might be in this, this panic or you might be in this energy of, um, you know, it's going to be harder for you to use your intuition. It's going to be harder for you to go down this path that your spirit guides have in store for you because you're just going to be worried about finding a new job or figuring out or, or not understanding, trying to process why this job ended or dealing with drama from, from coworkers, from bosses. And I feel like they, they have a lot in store for you. They want you to keep using your intuition. They want you to, they want this to be a, a smooth transition out of this job instead of a, a tower moment for you. Because if it's a tower moment, it's like you're not going to be able to think clearly. You're going to be caught up in this energy of illusion, which might make it harder for you to manifest what you want to manifest. It's like they could bring the love of your life to you. They could bring you know, your dream job to you. But it, it's like if you're in this panic where you're just like, I just need to find a job right away. I just I don't know what's going on. I wasn't expecting that change that feels like that just happened overnight because you were ignoring your intuition. And they had to push you out of stagnation. It's like you're not going to see the blessings in front of you. It's going to be harder. You're going to be in this anxiety mode, this panic mode. Um, and then your intuition is going to be blocked a little bit. It's like your third eye is going to be blocked up. And so, you know, they... <laughs> Tell me more about this. Actually, I'm going to use the other cards. Tell me more about this energy here. Thief, change. Message. Community. Yeah, because you have community support. You have... It's like there's a job that's in store for you. There's some kind of career path or job that's in store for you. Why the imprisonment card, though? Unexpected income, courtship, false person. Oh, let me see something here. Is this telling me that he might, you might come off as a gold digger to somebody? Okay, so this is like a side message I'm getting for somebody. But let's say that, let's say that whatever this stagnant job is, let's say that you don't end it on your own. Let's say that you go through, you know, you try to hold on to it, even though you know it's not, you know, it's a dead end job, you know, it's not going anywhere, but it's comfortable. You don't really feel like job hunting or, or putting yourself back out there, um, if it ends in like a tower moment and you are in that energy we talked about, the the panic, the I'm just trying to find a job, I think your spirit guides are kind of worried too because there's there's a community that's meant to come in and there's a wealthy man that's connected to this community and I feel like he's he, he might have a job offer for you or you guys could end up going into business together or he might just support, he's going to support you in a financial way. Or he's going to support your dreams. I feel like it's like he's either going to point you in the right direction, like he has um, connections or he he himself might be a boss or a CEO or something like that. It's like there's something uh, financially connected to this wealthy man. The thing is, though, and I think this is a soulmate that's coming in for you as well. The thing is, though, if you're in this imprisonment energy of you know fear panic like I just I need money right now I don't know I didn't expect that it's overnight change it's it, it you might come off like a thief to this person does that make sense it's it's like because you're in that panic and you, you might come off as like a gold digger type you might come off as like a false person because when the soulmate comes in you might be more focused on the money than you would be on them you know, it's like they're trying to get to know you and they have a job offer for you that maybe you're desperately looking and you need something within the next, the next couple of weeks to pay rent. And so, you know, they're they're trying to get to know you and there's a soulmate connection there. Um, and look, look how she's kind of looking away, too. It's like he's really looking at her like he's just like smitten by her and she's looking at something else. So it's kind of saying like, and it could be male or female. This could be two men, two women. Just take it as it resonates, whoever this is for. 
But it's like you see she's distracted. She's looking. She's thinking about something else. You can see in this picture, it's like she's got, you can kind of just tell. I don't know if you can see that very well. Sorry, my, my phone. But it's like you can tell she's like not fully there with him. It's like she's she's got something else on her mind, which makes sense if you're dealing with you know, poverty or job loss, financial struggles, things like that. It can be imprisoning. It can get you in your head. It's, it's really, what, what is the, um, what is in psychology, there's the hierarchy of needs and it's like housing, food, um, you know, money, all those things are like priority. You can't really focus on anything else if you have to worry about those things. I mean, love is, love is everything. Love is the most, you know, important thing in the universe, in my opinion, but it's, it's like, you still can't fully give that your time and attention. If you have to worry about, about money, about finding a job. And so I think that's why the spirit guide is concerned because, um, because yeah, like I said, if, if the situation, if this job doesn't end naturally, like if you don't smoothly transition and just, you know, start putting yourself out there and applying and finding something new and stable. Um, because in that case, it's like, if you do that, you can meet the soulmate and you can give it your attention. You don't have to panic. You're not going to have like a couple weeks in between where you don't have that financial security. But anyway, what I'm seeing, because this community and this this wealthy man is connected to, you know, finances, this job offer, whatever it might be, you might end up because you have your mind on money, which, you know, again, makes sense because you might be in a in a state of, of financial struggle trying to find a new job. It's like he's going to be trying to get to know you. He's going to be trying to have um let's say you guys meet and you're having these conversations and he mentions, oh, I'm a CEO or oh, I um. I know people that that work at at you know this this one venue. I can I can uh, maybe you're, you're in a certain industry and they and he has connections and he might say oh I, I know people I can you know I can get you an interview over there. Um, then it's like you're not really trying to. It, it's like you have a soulmate in front of your face, but you're not seeing it. You're not you're not paying attention to him. You're not recognizing it as a soulmate. Um, because you're just it's like you're just gonna want to know about that job. You're just going to be so stressed out that you're going to be like, okay, tell me more about that. Tell me more about that job. What does it pay? Um, tell me you're a CEO. Okay. Like, can I work for your company? Like, tell me more about that. Tell me about the position. And, um, at a certain point he might feel like you're a false person. It's like you guys might both, your spirit guides are worried about you guys missing, um, your, your spirit guides are worried that you won't, re you guys won't recognize this as a soulmate connection because on your end, it's like, you're so stressed out about money that you can't think about anything else. And so you're just, you're just focused on the job opportunity and not noticing the attraction, the chemistry. You're not getting to know this man. You're just, you know what I mean? Like he's trying to show you who he is. He's trying to tell you about himself and get to know you. And all you're going to want to talk about is this, this income, this job and figuring out your finances. Um, and so it's like, you're not recognizing him as a soulmate for that reason. And then on, on, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, it's like, he's not rec he's seeing you as a false person because he's going to be like, wow, she doesn't want to know me. She doesn't want to, she's not interested in, um, in anything I have to say about myself. She's just completely focused on, on, you know, what I can offer her financially. Um, So there's, there's a warning here for someone, uh, if you, and I know it's uncomfortable and you have to be especially careful during Mercury retrograde as, to, as well, because it's, it's not, I mean, it sucks that this energy is coming up now because it's like the worst time to find new jobs. But for some of you, it's like one of those situations where maybe Mercury retrograde is causing you to reflect and to really go inward and look at this toxic job or this stagnant job that you're in. And kind of face the reality that even though there might have been potential there before, there's there's not potential there now. There are toxic people or there's some kind of corruption in that environment. And so you do need to find something else. And that's the beautiful thing. It's like, I think if you just start applying at places, I think all of this can happen naturally. So it's like there's that smooth transition and then, you know, you have this job offer for him, but you're not, you're, you have financial stability. So it's not going to be your main focus. You're going to be able to, to recognize the connection, the potential there, the soulmate energy, um, cause you're still going to be primarily focused on, you know, uh, on love, on, on connection, on family, like being family oriented. So, so the finances will just be, you know, the icing on the cake instead of the main focus. 
I hope this makes sense. Let me see. Yeah, because there's a warning here to make sure. And I think, I mean, I think this man is understanding. And like I said, it makes sense. It's like if you're if you're going through financial struggles, it's like it doesn't mean that you're not, it doesn't mean you're a gold digger. It doesn't mean that you're it doesn't mean that you're just after the money, but it's it's hard to when you're struggling like that, it's hard to think about much else. It's hard to focus on much else. Um Yeah. I think this man has trust issues too, because I do think he's I do think he's an official person. I, I think that he does have you know, connections or money. He has something really going for him. He has some kind of like King of Pentacles energy, some kind of success here. Um, and so I think he's almost kind of, I think he's jaded too, because I don't feel like you're a gold digger type. You're not a gold digger, but I feel like he's used to that. He's, he's used to whatever role or position he's in. I think he's used to people using him for money. He's used to it's like I just keep looking at this card where it's like she's not he's really trying to hold her hand and she's just looking away she's not and if she looked at him she'd be like oh wait there's a connection here you know they are holding hands but it's like she's so like I said she's so distracted she can't she can't see what's right in front of her um I think but I think it's his own issues too that he needs to get past as well because I think being wealthy or maybe he's in like an industry maybe he knows people maybe he even if he himself doesn't have a lot of money, he might know people like he might have connections, you know, like he might be very well loved in the community, like he might have connections with, um, um, God, what would it be like? I don't know if it'd be like famous people, but it's like something of that, something like that, like maybe, maybe he has like a brother or a sibling or, 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 or like a brother or a family member or like a best friend that's like that owns a, a famous company or owns a, a famous club or something like that, where people kind of want him, people want him for his money or his connections, or it's like they see him as like a doorway to, to finances, to success to, you know, introducing them to, uh, to, to other success, ah, successful people. Sorry. So, and it's really sad because I feel like this man has a really good heart and no one sees that. No one sees, it's like, it's really sweet. I mean, I get a very sweet energy from this man where it's like, he really wants someone to just look at him and just know him for who he is. And just, you know, really, he, I feel, I feel like he does a lot for other people. You know, it, it's like, he's, He's one of those people where it's like people recognize him by his name or by his family's name or by some kind of, a, you know, whatever in it is that he has, whatever connections he has. It's like people go to him like he's like the middle man. Um, if he's not for some, he might be a CEO or manager himself. For others, it's like he's a middle man and he knows famous or successful people that can open up doors for for people, for 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 this woman. Um but yeah, it's really sad because he's very sweet and it's like no one, I, th I think he's very intelligent too. And I think he has a lot of people that come into his life and they, have you ever had those friends that like, if they want to vent about something, they won't just be real about it. They'll message you out of nowhere, six months, not talking. And they'll be like, Oh, I was just thinking about you. How are you doing? Like, what's up? They'll have like a little, you know, some fake small talk, five, five, 10 minutes. And then they'll be like, Oh, I need money or, Oh, I need a place to stay. Or, Oh, I, I like, or they want to like vent to you about something. We're like, Oh, I'm going like, they don't have anybody else to vent to. And they want to pour all their shit out on you when they haven't even been there for you. It's like people use this man in that way, I feel, where they try to hustle him and outsmart him. And I think he has a good heart and he wants to see the best in people. And so it honestly makes me really emotional, like because he, he's very sweet. He's a very loving man. He's a very good person. But um, it's just it makes me really sad. Oh, my gosh, it really makes me sad because it's like I just get this like very innocent, like there's something about him that's very like he's very mature and intelligent and wise and successful. Like he has a lot of power, um, this potential soulmate of yours. But I feel like he's also there's something about him that's just very pure and very sweet and innocent and almost childlike. And it just almost makes me like want to cry because it's like I just see people talking to him and it's like, 
oh god reading it like I think the last reading that almost made me cry was the cat reading I did where I got there was like a kitty that was going to come into someone's life like a stray cat um oh gosh okay sorry random but it's like it makes me emotional because it's it's like I just see him like talking to people and he's so lonely he's so lonely it's like he has I feel like he's very popular but it's, it's like no one like he's an amazing man this man is amazing like he's like the entire package intelligent caring empathetic maybe even intuitive like he he's he's everything this man is a really good person he hasn't let the world make him bitter and closed off despite all his he's got a lot of life experience despite everything he's been through he hasn't let the world uh make him cold he still really tries to see the best in people even when it's hard and it just makes me so sad because it really feels like because I know what that loneliness is like too you know loneliness like really truly deep loneliness when you just don't have anyone like it's it's devastating like we're not meant to be that alone it's really hard to go through that and it just makes me really sad because I just see him having these conversations with people and it's like he knows it's 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 like he knows deep down, like he knows that they're trying to get something money, a connection. They're trying to get something from him. But it's like he's so he's just so he wants so badly to like talk to people and to know people and to have them know him. Um, so he really tries to see the best in everybody. And he tries to have these like deep conversations and find these connections and then it's like people steer the conversation away from that. You know what I mean? Like he just genuinely like wants to know people. Like he's really um, innocent and, and curious about people. Like he wants to know what they're all about. He wants to, to, it's like mutual too, where he wants to share his life experiences and his stories. And he also just as much like wants to hear, you know, other people's stories and life experiences. And, and he just wants that deep connection. And when he has these conversations with people, I just feel like he knows, like he can feel it. He can feel it in the energy. Like they're trying to, they want something from him. They're trying to get, they're trying to use him for something. So when he, when he starts having those deep conversations, they steer it away from that. So they're like, well, how about that job? Or how about like, like they, they, they try to manipulate the conversation to, um, to get him to be this doorway to, to whatever they're, they're trying to get out of him. It's really sad. And so he never finds those deep connections with people. Um, and I think he's like doing his best to not be jaded. Like he wants to see the best in everybody, but I, I do think that it's been very damaging. And so I think he is Like, it's just sad. Like, you guys got to watch out for this because you are genuine. You guys are soulmates. But when you come in, don't don't just see this man's money. And he might have a lot of money. He might have – there might be something about him that's very impressive. It's like his status, fame, or knowing – maybe he's like a brother of a famous person or something like that. It's like he has, you know, connections, money, whatever it might be, a position, a higher position – there's something about him that's impressive and everyone just focuses on that and they ignore all the other aspects of his personality. So it's important that when you meet this person, don't don't do that. Just, you know, whatever that connection is or his money, his, if he's a CEO, whatever it is, don't focus on that. Don't like really try to because there's so much more to him. Really try to get to know who he is as a person. Really try to listen to him. Um. It's like that prince who's like lonely, who it's like everyone's like, oh, my God, he's a prince. And like he's looking for that one girl that, you know, Cinderella or whatever, that that doesn't care that he's a prince. They, you know, she genuinely loves him for who he is. That's what he's looking for. He doesn't he doesn't want to be loved for the wrong reasons. Um, so, yeah, really be, be careful about, you know, finding a smooth tra a transition out of this toxic job. And, and also coming off, as, you know, be your true self. Don't be focused on on shallow material things when you meet this person. Um, really, really get to know him because there's a lot. He has a really big heart that he might hide. I don't think he even well, I mean, he hide, he's not like emotionally unavailable. Like I don't get like an emotionally unavailable vibe. I just get more of the energy. It's like if he trusts you, he'll be open with you. He's not going to sabotage it. You don't want a man that sabotages it. I'm sorry, but that's. That's a coward's way out. I, men that sabotage and, and hurt people just, you know, to protect themselves from, from imaginary threats, that's, that's cowardly, honestly. 
I don't get that vibe from him. It's like he's he's emotionally available, but he's um, intuitive. He uses discernment. He's careful. He really takes his time getting to know people. Um, and there, there's not very many. I don't know if he's close to anybody. If he is close to people, it's probably only a, like a select few people in his family or friend group that he really trusts that actually really genuinely know who he is. But I mean, it's also been that way because no one's wanted to. It's like he wants people to know him, but they haven't wanted to. So he hasn't. It's like he waits for them to give him the green light that they actually want to know that part of him. So yeah, just just make sure that you guys um, are aware of what's right in front of you, aware of the love connection here. Don't come off as a gold digger. Don't come off as a false person. This man, I mean, he does have traumas though because of all the people that abused him. And that is something that he has to work through as well because it's, it's like, you know, like if you're going through financial struggles, you are going to be focused on finances. That doesn't mean that you want to use him or that you want to use anybody. But I think that he's very distrusting and so he's very quick to be like, oh, she just wants money. Or, oh, another person that just wants me because, you know, my brother's famous and they want to meet my brother or something like that. Yeah, he has a really big, he's like the king of swords. It's like there's an offer here, but he's going to protect this because he's, because he's very gentle. Someone that's this gentle, they have to protect themselves. It's like he knows how cruel the world can be. Yeah, because if someone comes off sneaky, he's very quick to, he can be very passionate and he can be very quick to block people out and leave them out in the cold if they come off sneaky. I think that he's kind though. I don't think he's like, I don't, I think that he, he's very empathetic. So he understands people's struggles, but he's also, he has, he has something that he has to protect. There's something he has to protect himself. And he's learned the hard way that he has to protect himself through all these experiences he's been through. So, so it can be, and again, this is trauma that he also needs to work on because yes, there probably are a lot of people that use him for his status, but there's probably also been decent people that have come through that he might have just immediately, like they got too excited because of who he's connected to, or they got too excited about his, his, maybe his position, his job is really interesting and they got really excited about that. And he might've been a little bit too, with the King of Wands, you know, passionate, like maybe too quick to just assume the worst and be like, oh, this is just another person that like, you know, like they might've gotten excited and they're like, oh, this is just another person that wants the money. When it's it's like they, they this, this person, this, these people might've actually genuinely wanted to know about him too, but they were just also excited about what he was sharing um, so he could be kind of quick to be like, oh, this is, you know, to, it's like he's intuitive, but sometimes I feel like his intuition is a little bit clouded because of all his experiences. I mean, he does have to protect himself. It's logical, but there needs to be more of a balance in his life. So, so yeah, be careful to come off the, to, to make sure that you're presenting your true self. You are the queen of cups. You are the queen of cups. It's kind of like you guys remember like the bachelor like back I don't even know if they still have the bachelor or not but like remember like back in the day when um when uh you know when like when the woman would win like when when like the final contestant the final woman would win and it's like she could choose between a million dollars and you know this man that she loves um if she chooses the, and and like the surprise was if she chooses the man over the money the money ends up coming with the man. Like they would, they would surprise the contestant and be like, Oh, we're giving both of both you and your new husband a million dollars. So she can, she can have both. So it's like one of those situations where it's like you choose the man first and the money is just going to be a side part of that. It's just, it's going to be a bonus to, to what you're already getting from this man. Cause honestly, like I do feel like whatever this, the status, this position, it's impressive. Don't get me wrong. But like, this the energy I feel from this man, it's even more impressive, like his personality, who he is, just how caring and how loving he is, despite all he's been through. That's even more rare. That's even more precious than whatever financially he has to offer. So make sure you're not in this frantic energy. Make sure you're coming off as yourself, as as the queen of cups that you are, you know, because he's the king of cups. And if you're the queen of cups, he's going to match that energy. Um 
Yeah. Why a ton of swords? Oh, wait a minute. It's actually good. I feel like you're going to help him heal from this trauma because you're going to be one of the only people in his life that actually, like... You're going to be genuine. He's not going to be used to someone who's genuine like you. It's almost, it's like, a, there's like an ending, but I almost feel like a positive energy from it where it's like an ending to an old perspective that he has. Where it's like, he's going to, you're going to teach him things and he's going to teach you things. And I feel like you're almost going to, um, it's like, you're going to be ending a perspective that he had. It's like he's going to redo things. He's going to rethink things. He's going to meditate on it. And he's going to be like, okay, maybe I have been too quick to dismiss people and assume the worst about them because of my status. Um, maybe I need to find a more balanced way to be logical and protect myself and not give too much of myself away. But maybe I could be a little bit more open with people and give people more chances. Let me see here. Not too many chances. Well, you know, not like not giving toxic people chances. I don't mean it like that, but maybe not being so quick to assume the worst. Yeah, you're his wish fulfillment. You're the empress. You're the emperor or the empress. You're his match. You're this person's match. Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, he's going to show you the King of Cups side of himself, too. It's going to take him all out of strength, but I, I feel like he's just going to see you as his match. Um, and I think he's going to decide that you're worth the risk. He's going to decide, you know, like, yeah, I am scared of being used, but I'm going to put myself out there. And that's what you want, too. You don't want a man who you don't want a coward. You honestly, you don't want a coward. You don't want someone who runs. You don't want someone who says, oh, I've been hurt. I'm afraid of getting hurt, so I'm going to sabotage this or I'm going to run. You want someone who says, you know, I, I am gentle and loving. I am scared of getting hurt. I have been through a lot. I am near the Ten of Wands. I am near that, you know, my my last straw. Like, this might be this man's last chance at love. He might be like, I'm not doing it after this. This is my last chance. But you want someone who looks at you and says, hey, this, this soulmate connection is worth the risk. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to tame my fears. I'm going to tame my anxieties. I'm going to meditate on them. And I'm going to work through these fears and and match, match energy. I'm going to be emotionally available. This is worth it. I'm going to take the risk. You want someone who takes the risk for you. And someone who genuinely loves you is going to take the risk for you. Someone that doesn't love you is going to shut it down and they're going to say they're too scared or they're not ready for a commitment or, you know, blah, blah, blah some bullshit excuse but somebody who actually is really really into you they're they're not gonna see a, a life without you as a choice as an option for them they're gonna look at you and they be like this person's amazing i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna try i'm gonna yeah you guys both have you both been waiting for the ship to sail in this is yeah this is good karma this is justice this is justice this is karmic justice for both of you you've both been waiting on a connection like this so I'm going to end the reading. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if it resonates.